Hello and welcome to Jovik Today. I am Nishina Mohammed. It's great to have you with us. In the spirit of Ubuntu, South Africans came together to help all those affected by the current drought, which has caused much destruction across various regions in the country. NGO Operation Hydrate has made headlines by distributing water to drought-stricken areas in South Africa. This is the biggest single distribution of water South Africa has ever seen over a weekend. 1.2 million litres in total. Thanks to the volunteers, thanks to the supporters, thanks to corporate South Africa, thanks to government. And this is what, we are, well, this is what South Africa is all about. It's Ubuntu in action. And the goodwill from South Africans has been amazing. There's been a lot of time and effort that's been dedicated by a lot of volunteers. Um, and without, I think, you know, if, 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 if we have these volunteers um, and the companies that have come to support us, as well as, 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 as uh, uh, corporate companies, the trucking companies, you name it. Um, without them, this wouldn't be possible. I've been on since the first delivery into Sienakal and then it's gone on to different regions, various regions. Um, I think the best part of this is it's humbling. You go out there and you see these people that actually come to you, they queue up and they actually need water, they ask for water, and it's so humbling to actually be there and be able to assist them. Only being in existence for a month, 30 trucks destined for three provinces will mark the collection and distribution of more than 5 million litres of water. Operation Hydrate is here to stay. We cannot give it up the, uh, the call to action. People want drinking water. The effects of the drought um, are, are here to stay even if the rainfall comes uh, uh, over the next few days or next few weeks. Uh, we are looking at long-term sustainable solutions. Yes, bottled water is a, so, a short-term emergency relief um, as part of our humanitarian effort, but we will continue to look at the long-term sustainable solutions. I'm Riley Sagani Posakwe for Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, joebooktoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at joebooktoday. And if you're a person that's on the move, you can always catch us on pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an I. Alex McNamara of the National Business Initiative explained to Joebook Today why dry taps in some areas and water restrictions is now a reality in Johannesburg. We need to be aware of the fact that we, our water availability is limited. Uh, we're also faced with a, with a warming climate over time. But then the more specific stuff is actually quite interesting. It's really just a combination of three factors. One is that we had a heat wave. The second is that we had very little rain. And thirdly, people were watering their gardens. That led to this kind of culmination where we had very limited supply in Joburg. And we had to move, obviously, to phase war, level one water restrictions, and from there to level two water restrictions. So when you move to sort of stage two water restrictions, basically what it means is all of stage one applies, and that's effectively not to use water at certain times of the day for watering of gardens, uh, to avoid you know, using a hose pipe to water your car, so to wash your car, and basically generally conserving water wherever you can. The difference with stage two is that there's now pressure, pressure management that can be applied. And what that means is that, in, in essence, that there, there could be lower pressure that runs through the system. So you might find that when you put on the tap, there's just not quite as much water coming through. Although Alex considers the current situation as serious, he points out that it's not unusual. What we're dealing with in many ways is a natural climatic variability, which is known as the El Nino. And that means that often every 10 years, we will have a drought in persistently hot, you know, sort of hot weather. And that's a natural sort of climatic event that we, we have to live with, basically. But on the other hand, we know that we waste a lot of water in this country, for example, and in Gauteng as well. So it's kind of a combination of understanding that there are natural factors that we're just dealing with, but that also we have quite serious issues we have to address. I think about 25% of the water in the city of Joburg is unaccounted for, which means it's lost through leaks or through, through just you know, poor billing or something like that. So like with much of the country, if we can sort it out, make sure our billing systems are accurate, if we can make sure we fix leaks and report them as quickly as possible, um, and account for all that water which is basically lost in the system, we'll, make, we'll go a very, very long way. So I wouldn't say it's a crisis. Um, in many ways, it's just dealing with a, a predicted series of events. But as long as we take sort of the right sort of remedial action, we should be, we should be OK. Both national and provincial governments have announced plans to deal with the countrywide drought. And a lot of the stuff that we know needs to be done, or is being done already, 
but it's just packaged for, for, for us to understand. So a lot of it's around water reuse. So if we do that, we will have a much more secure water future. Water conservation is another key aspect. So if we can save water, whether it be you know, through reducing leakage or whether it would just be better monitoring, we're, we'll be in a much better position. There are also some talks around you know, increasing tariffs during, water, during drought sort of periods. And that possibly is something we have to look at. Um, ultimately, a, a tariff is a way to send a price signal to people and to say, listen, water is becoming more scarce at this point in time, so you need to sort of manage your behavior and try and reduce water wherever you can. Uh, so a lot of it is actually, I think, is about the basics and getting the basics right. So the plans, I think, are, are very viable. We, if we look at the much broader scale, um, the supply option at the moment we're focusing on is the second phase of the Lesotho Highlands water project. We have actually have quite a good track record overall in being able to deliver water to, to the country. And I think there's a lot of emphasis now that this is a key risk we have to address, like we had to address electricity as well. So, whatever the current state of Johannesburg's water availability and supply, indications are, going forward, all should use water much more sparingly. Marisa de Klerk, Joburg Today. Hi, I'm Danny Glover and you're watching Joburg Today. And that brings us to the end of the show. For more coverage on the city, check out our playlist. That's it from me, Nishina. I leave you with Sutherland's Come Right Back. Back in ETV. Come right back They'll come right back They'll just they'll come right back Now I don't know what this is Or how the hell we got here in the last few years Oh, how things have changed so very much things that I've seen. I bet there's a storm brewing in that here it is. But when the wind blows, the clouds away, they'll just they'll come right back. They'll come right back. Just to come Mm -hmm. But when the